guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I am so glad to have you back today. And if you're new here and visiting my channel for the first time, welcome. I do lots of DIYs, a trash to treasure, furniture flips with my husband Chris, and thrifting adventures to fit into the farmhouse decor. So in today's video, I am participating with Sherry, a pretty simple Sherry. And she has two channels and I will link them down below so you can hop on over and check her channel out. She does lots of DIYs, home organization, thrifting adventures. So there's just so much on her channels to see. So Sherry's wonderful co-host for this event is Lisa of Lisa and Company. And she does some wonderful DIYs, some furniture flips, some dollar store. She does it all. She just has great home decor. And today's video it is upcycling ugly so what sherry has asked us to do is go out to the thrift store and find something that we consider to be kind of ugly and give it new life and make it beautiful now when i'm out thrifting i see a lot of unwanted stuff so i would guess i would kind of consider that ugly even though i can see the hidden beauty within that's why i am obsessed with thrifting so when I was out thrifting, I used to always see um, these big metal pieces and the colors were not my farmhouse colors by any means. And the more I saw them, the more I started to check them out and notice how much texture they had. So I'm like, oh, well these would be perfect for my farmhouse, you know, under coat of black and top coat of white. And I can just really make those details pop. So I was super excited to run across this. So this is how I upcycle metal pieces that I get out thrifting. So when I started thrifting, I saw these metal pieces all the time and I kind of used to pass them up. But then every time I'd see them, I'd see all this beautiful detail. I don't know if the owner donated them because they just moved and they didn't fit where they newly lived or the colors were outdated. But I just look at these looking at them that I can put them, my black on them and then put them on white and then distress them and all that beautiful detail will just pop right out. And I know this barn star doesn't have any detail to it, but oh my gosh, I was so excited to find a star like this. So if you think spray painting metal is easy, <laughs> Well, it is because you get to spray it, but you need to start right off getting that crud cutter or getting something to clean any residue left behind on these metal pieces because especially with spray paint, if you leave anything on there, the spray paint will not attach to it. So all these pieces need a very good clean job and you need to make sure that it's nice and dry before applying the spray paint. And look at here, would you ever have thought that this piece was this dirty? Look at what that crud cutter does. Not only does it help me remove the stickers, but look at the crud that just came off of this. Now, if I would have tried to paint this, that paint would not have adhered. And I don't know if it's the paint coming off this metal one, but it, there again, you need to always prep your pieces, clean them properly. And then for those of you who wonder if I wear a mask or not, I've always wear a mask. I did not ever even have to go out and buy one because I already had one before this even started. So my go-to spray paint is the Rust-Oleum Paint and Primer in one, and I start right off with the black. And maybe that's the reason the person donated this beautiful barn star because, you know, maybe they didn't think the burgundy was in anymore, but I was very happy to find it. So when you're spray painting, you're not spray painting to cover, you know, just like painting with a brush, you know, I'm spray painting because I'm going to cover it quickly. You still want to do thin coats because especially on metal, spray paint will run and it will pull up. And then what do you do? Because it doesn't, spray paint doesn't really like to be brushed very well. And I like this Rust-Oleum because I feel, feel that it adheres to the metal pieces very well. And there's no other reason, but that's why I use the Rust-Oleum. And reg my kills, it might, you know, but for the base, I really like the Rust-Oleum. So remember what I said, I wasn't painting to cover. The first coat, 
light coat, just like anything else, you know, when you're painting, um, it's better to do light coats and do multiple than to have a globby mess. And there, I got that spot. I know y'all saw where I had missed some. So the, the nice thing about using a flat spray paint is that when it's dry, it is not shiny. So you know when you can apply your next coat because it's not shiny anymore. So I had somebody ask how much spray paint they think I went through. So for the front and back of these pieces, and you know, they're quite large, I went through two cans of the black And I think I pay $3.47 at Walmart for a can of this spray paint. And, you know, for me, this is what I feel sticks the best to metal. So it's, it, this is what works for me. So especially on this resin piece, I am taking a clear matte polycrylic because if I went to paint that with my white and then go to sand it, I would just go right back down to the bare color that it was, just the way that um, the spray paint works. So I have learned to do this in between polycrylic and it really doesn't take much at all. I just do one coat on it and you know I make sure that I get every direction um, when I'm spraying it. And so I don't go through two bottles by any means. And then I do it on the rest of the pieces also. For some reason, the black, um, when I go to wax, kind of leaves a black residue on my white paint. So if I do the polycrylic in between, it, I don't have that problem. I know you all probably think I waste too much product, but it's just all about what the finished piece looks like. So now I'm gonna give the pieces a coat, just actually just one coat of the Rust-Oleum Flat White. And yes, I do do the backs because especially when you're spray painting, if you were painting, hand painting, you could just do the front. But when you're spray painting, spray paint just goes all over and you get bits and pieces of this back um, covered anyway. You know, so I just, like I said, I like my backs just to be as pretty as my fronts. So see what I mean? Just when I flip this back over, you can tell where it sat on my pieces of wood so it doesn't stick to that um, paper sack. So that's, you know, the reason that I do the front and the back. So the reason I'm only doing one coat of this is that one, it would take a ton of this white spray paint to cover up this. So that was two cans that I used front and back. But then I go through because I really like my Kills white color and the spray paint to me that is sticks better to metal um, just has a blue base to it. And I really like this, just this warm white of my Kills paint. So you can see the difference there. And really after I've spray painted it with one coat, it really only needs two coats of this. Now, especially for this piece, you do really need to flip it over because as you see, you would not be able to get that um, area in the from just having it on the top. And then, you know, you just, there's just a lot of little ways you have to look at these metal pieces because the way that this metal curves, um, I just, I look and I overlook and look again. So now the fun part of distressing this, <laughs> I absolutely love how metal distresses um, the crisp edge, you know, some 150 grit sandpaper. You don't have as, even have to have like a terribly new one. And what I do is I just kind of press hard, um, hard-ish, you know, of where I want it to distress and especially on those corners, but it just, it's just beautiful. You see that black, you see a little bit of the silver of the metal. I just absolutely love distressing metal. I know that distressing paint is not everybody's thing, but for you who love to distress, it, do you find it as satisfying as I do when all these details that I distress just, you just, they just pop right out. So I sure am glad that I sprayed cut, crud cutter on this piece. This paint stuck on this resin will, really well. 
Um, sometimes resin is a little bit on the questionable side because it is not like metal and it's not like wood. It does not really absorb in the paint whatsoever. So it kind of just sits on top of it. But this resin piece did very well. And I actually had to work pretty hard to actually get this to distress. So now that I've got all my metal pieces sanded and distressed, I'm just blowing them off with using the air compressor. That is one of the bonuses of having a workshop area. So for the piece of metal wall decor that had a tree on it and that I removed, well, I thought I removed it, but that's a whole nother story. Um, I, this is my third attempt. The vinyl pulled up on this piece of, for, I just wanted this nice little simple bird to match these cute little leaves. This little piece did not, was not, you were not able to take it off. So here I'm using my, um, apple barrel multi-use paint and I'm just going really lightly because I want it to be very aged and very faded on this piece of metal to match the distressing. So on this board some of this little brownish color peeked through when I was distressing it so I had an idea of putting some of this antiquing wax over this black that's why I left it very just a light little cover so I'm just kind of wiping that on the stencil just to kind of give it that aged look. So like I said, this was my third attempt of removing. I stopped using the vinyl. I went to my contact paper. I even aged the contact paper, you know, so it didn't really matter. This just did not, the paint did not want to stay off. Even though I had not got any of that paper left, I don't know, but you know, I had decided that, you know, sometimes God wants a project to be the way he wants. So he apparently wanted this to be aged. So I, Absolutely, once I just accepted it, I thought it looked gorgeous. So here's where you can see those little spots that pulled off the paint, but then I thought, you know what? Just sand it in, age this little birdie a little bit more, and just leave it alone. You know, there are those projects that can drive you crazy, and metal's not always the funnest thing to stencil. So I've usually never had quite this problem before, but so in that top corner, I decided that I'm gonna try to distress just a little bit more since there were, you know, three other spots. And then to finish these pieces off, just like the wood pieces, I like to use the Varathane finishing wax. It just leaves the pieces nice and smooth and just smells good. I know I say that every time, but oh my gosh, you guys have to try this stuff. It does smell good. When giving these new life with that black undercoat and that white paint, I don't even recognize this piece anymore. I think now this could go into anybody's home and just it's such a nice large piece and I don't think you'd ever get tired of that white. I'm sorry, but to me with the darker colors, it just hides all that beautiful detail. And then when you put this white on there and you distress a piece like this, all that beautiful, all those beautiful edges and all that beautiful detail that was hidden just shows right up. So I know this is probably hard to pick which one would be a favorite because I do in a way think that they all are similar, but do I have you looking at metal pieces and resin pieces a little bit differently when you're out thrifting? Can you see all that detail and how you can just make it pop? It's funny how you stress over a piece and actually once I just came to accept that this needed to be distressed on that front and I had sanded them smoothed and did the Varathane wax over, I absolutely think that it just looks like it was meant to be and I do like that little birdie on there. And did you wonder if I painted that barn star white? I did not. I absolutely can imagine this on the side of our new workshop and just kept it black. Even though I have one on my own front porch as it is, I just absolutely loved it. And yes, I did seal that um, black in with the polycrylic and now it's just a nice sturdy piece and because I plan on this probably being an outdoor piece I did not distress it because I did not want to get it to that raw metal where it would rust. 
So I thank you for watching today's video and which one of the metal decor pieces was your favorite? Did I inspire you to look at thrifted metal pieces a little bit different way? And if so, give me a quick comment. And if you're part of my YouTube family, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. And if you'd like to become part of my YouTube family, just hit that subscribe button. Thanks again.